Okay, um, there is one thing I forgot to mention when we were going through these notes yesterday. It is something about adding on to a plane. So please go back to your notes where we defined a plane. And one thing we need to add on is um, we drew three points on our plane, but in order to define a plane, it does consist of three non-collinear points. So I'm going to add here um, the phrase three non-collinear points. Three non-collinear points always determine one plane. Always determine one plane. And sometimes that's important because you almost have to trust it and sometimes you can't really see that. Um, so I will point us back to that definition quite a bit. Okay, I think we're ready to do some examples. Um, so if some of the classes have already seen these examples, you can fast forward to where we need to be. So naming four points, uh, four coplanar points. So when we look at the diagram, make sure you can see that there are actually five planes. There is a bottom and four sides. So there's only one plane that contains four points, and that has to do with the bottom of the plane, or the bottom of the figure. So the four points would be points A, B, C, and D. Now, naming three lines, I'm going to focus on the lines that are shown with the arrowheads. So there are actually four lines, and one line would be line AE. So make sure you draw it correctly with the arrowhead above it. You could also write EA, um, line uh, CE would work. We also have line BE. And the fourth one, if we wanted to name all of them, would be line DE. Okay. So at any point, you're welcome to pause this or rewind it and uh, work at your own pace. Uh, next one, name a line that passes through two points. Well, when I look at my diagram, I see my one line there. So when we name that line, we use the two points and then we use the line symbol above it. So that's line XY or line YX. Uh, number four, name a plane that contains three non-collinear points. So on my plane, I see points uh, G, I see points H, I see F. Now N, that's the name of the line and R is the name of the plane. Notice there's no dots. So the only points shown are the points G, H, and F. So those are my three points. And when I name the plane, I'm going to name it uh, with those three points. So I can name it plane G, H, F. Or I could name it with this letter right here. I could name it plane R. Okay, so I have two options when I name planes, if there's that letter in the corner. Okay, now some sketching. So I really would like you to try this on your own, and then we can come back. I'd like you to check. So sketching two lines that intersect in one point. So line number one. So when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put my points on there. Line number two. I'm going to call this CD. And two lines intersect at one point, so I get another point, and I'll just call it E. Okay, so that would be one representation. Um, number six says sketch a figure that shows a line that lies in the plane. So I'm going to start with my plane. And if my line is in my plane, it just needs to sit in my plane like this. So this time I'm going to name my line with the letter by the arrowhead. So I'm just going to put a little M right there and call it out line M. Okay, last one for sketching. We've got um, sketch a figure that shows two lines that intersect, sketch a figure that shows two lines that intersect in one point in a plane, but only one line is in the plane. So if you haven't sketched this yet, I really want you to try this on your own. Okay, so in order to sketch it, I almost need to think with two different planes. So I'm gonna sketch a plane. And I'm going to have my one line in the plane. I'm just going to call it line N. So my second line really needs to come from a different direction. So envision the line coming from the top. It's going to intersect my line on my plane, but now it's exiting at the back. And I'm going to call 
that line M. So I've got two lines that intersect at this one point, but only one of those lines is in my plane. And so I'm going to name my plane A in the corner here, just to be a little bit more precise. Sometimes I see students like to do this. They like to put one line here and one line here. But technically, both of those are in the plane. Because remember, planes continue in all directions forever. So if we were to extend that plane out, it would just swallow up that line anyways. OK, moving right along. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit here, but we're going to deal with a, a line from the algebra perspective. So you are given. You are given an equation of a line and a point. Use substitution to determine whether the point is on the line. So, because my ordered pair represents x and y, I can substitute those values in. So if I check by plugging in x and y, so I'm going to have 8 equals 5 times the x value plus 3. If I get the same number on the left as I do on the right, then that means the, line, the point is on the line. So I've got 5 plus 3 is 8. So therefore, I have just shown the point is on the line. So we're dealing with geometry, but algebra, we did a lot of lines. So this is an algebraic way to check that out. Okay, um, I would like you to pause the video right now and try to do all four of these, and then come back and check your answers, um, and really pay attention to how you're naming things. So go ahead and pause it now before you start. Okay, two opposite rays. I need them to go in opposite directions. So um, I have one option here because of what's shown on my picture. I've got ray CD, and then I have ray CB. And I have to name it like that. I need to make sure they're going in op opposite directions and the symbols on the top of the, line, the points are correct. Um, a point on segment BC. So segment BC contains um, Oh, you know what? Mine should be set. Mine, I think you're going to say line. I think I have a mistake on my smart notebook. So you sh you're say a point on line BC. So that's going to be important. So BC, even though BC is shown on the picture, it goes continuously in both directions forever. So it will eventually pick up point D. So a point that is on line BC is going to be point D. Um, number three, name the intersection of plane N and plane T. So we, we talked about yesterday, two planes intersect in one line. So my answer here should be a line. So plane N is the blue plane. T is the um, kind of more orange plane up here. So they intersect along line BC. So if you wrote line BC, you're fine. You could also name it line BD. Uh, you could also name it line CD. Those are all both, or all three of those are accurate. And then finally, um, name a plane that contains E, D, and B. So the only plane that contains those would be plane T. Okay, in this last section here, we might talk more about when, um, when I am back. So um, we are going to summarize our notes. So if you would, go ahead and take a stab at trying to answer these questions. So I want you to try to summarize real briefly. What do your notes say? What can you use your notes to do? And what do your notes mean? The whole point is that you are able to make the notes yours so that when you come back and look at them, they have a little bit more meaning. 